People who know me know that I'm a giant word nerd. I love words. So today, I thought I would show you how you can use Google Slides to create an interactive word wall that you can have your students use to share concept and understanding of different topics. You can use it for science, math, language, all sorts of topics. So let's have a look at how we would use this uh, particular technology. What we're going to do here is I've created um, sort of a cork board situation. Uh, to get that background, all I did was I clicked on background. And uh, when I chose, I go to choose image, and then I can just do a Google image search for corkboard. I find the uh, one that I want, and then I would click it, and then choose insert. It's not going to change at all because it's the same picture. And there we go. Now um, you'll notice that I have a couple picture frames here, and what I've done is I've just again I've just done an insert image, and I've searched the web for picture frames. And uh, one, one little trick you can do there is if you search for uh, uh, picture frame and then PNG or transparent background, you will actually find some that have um, no, uh, they, they'll have some transparency to them. So you'll see that this one actually um, is see-through, so you could resize it as you wished, and then you could put um, your word underneath it. So what I'm going to do is I've got a couple words here. You'll notice that I also have uh, three slides in total. I've got my loquacious side, slide, sorry, and I've got my uh, skew slide. If I were to normally present this, what would happen is when I click through in my presentation, I go to loquacious first, and I go to skew uh, second. And then to get back, I have to go all the way back, pressing my arrow keys or um, using the navigation bar down here. What we want to do today is we want it to be a situation where students can click on the word that they're trying to understand and be routed directly to that slide. So if they click on loquacious, we want them to go straight to loquacious. Um, then rather than uh, using the navigation bar to get back, what we want them to do is we want them to be able to get back to the main site um, quickly and easily. Because if this populates with a lot of words, it'll be very tedious to go through all the slides. Right, right now, we're at three slides. It's not a big deal. But you can imagine if we had 200 slides, it would be uh, a bit time consuming to um, go all the way back. So what we're going to do is we're going to use uh, links within our presentation to get us to where we want to go. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on this picture frame. And uh, you'll notice that when I click on Insert, uh, I can't put a link on there. And the reason is because I have those objects grouped. I actually have an object, which is the frame. I have word art, which is the word askew. And I've got a um, text box. And actually, the word art might be, uh, and the text box may be the same layer. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to highlight that. And then I'm mm -hmm. going to click uh, Arrange and then Ungroup. The reason you might want to group things is you might want to move them all at the same time. So if I move that right now, it's, um, it, you know, I have to move each of these things individually. The reason you would want to group them is because you normally, if you have them arranged in a certain way, you want to keep that arrangement even if you change the position on the page. So what I'm going to do is, to show you how to do that is you just go to Arrange and then Group. And now all those things will move at the same time. You don't have to worry about uh, moving each individual layer. However, where that becomes an issue is when you're trying to link things. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to ungroup them for now. And now I'm going to click on my picture frame. When I pick, click on my picture frame, I now have this insert link option. And so what I'm going to do is click on the insert link option, or I could do control K. And now I have an option to put in a link um, or I can go to a slide in this presentation. So what I'm going to do is click on slide in this presentation, and then I want to go to slide three, a skew. And then all I have to do is click apply, and it will show up as a link. If I go to present mode now, what I don't want to happen is for the slideshow to proceed normally. I don't want to click on a skew and be brought to loquacious. That's not what I'm trying to do. Hopefully, if I've done this correctly, when I click on a skew, it'll take me to a different spot. So if I go to loquacious, boom, I go to loquacious. When I go to a skew, click, 
I'm brought to the askew slide. So using those, uh, using those objects as links will allow you to jump around in the, in the um, slide jump. Now you'll also notice that I have a home uh, button here. And in retrospect, I probably should have made it a little bit higher because when I move my mouse, even in that area, it brings up that uh, navigation thing. So I'm gonna do a little bit of an edit there. Um, but when I click on this, it actually takes me back to the home site. So I'm going to go over here. I'm gonna move this upwards a little bit, just about that high. And um, because I've already created the link, all I have to do is highlight the whole thing and then control C to copy. If I go over to my SKU slide and hit control V to paste, it will be placed there and it's still routing me to the first slide. So now if I were to present my, my word wall here, click on loquacious, great, understand what it means. Um, and then I can click on home. I might, if you're doing this through your class, you might want to consider having them find an image that goes along really well with the word. You could have certain kids um, responsible for certain slides. I'm going to go to click on home and I'm brought back to the main site. Now I'm wondering what askew means. So I'm going to click on askew. I'm brought to askew. Great. I understand it. And now I can click on home and then I'm brought back to my original spot. So as I've said, you can use this for all sorts of things. Um, if you're doing habitats, for example, you might have students defining certain habitats on their slide that they're working on. You could have them show, um, for example, uh, images of wetlands and some of the animals that live there. Um, if you're doing early societies, you could have uh, different concepts related to that. If you're doing mathematics, uh, you might have uh, some of your commonly used math terms and treat it almost like a math dictionary for students. Great way for students to show their knowledge and to share their knowledge with their classmates.